Hi, welcome to the YouTube video. That's the intro clip. <laughs> Can I explain my thinking? You guys want an over-explain run? Sure. An overly explained run. I can do that. Sounds fun. Chat, let me explain. On Act 1, there are three basic fights, meaning that the first three hallway fights that you find, whether they're in these little things or in these little things, um, the 20% chance that you have of obtaining them in a question mark room, um, the first three fights are going to be basic fights. Two, two little spiny thorn guys, one jawworm, one cultist, etc. Um, after that, you will be fighting hard fights. So normally what you want to do is you want to use those three hallway fights to power up your deck with a lot of like brute force damage and not a whole lot of scaling stuff. If you find too much scaling, and uh, especially on Ascension 20, on earlier acts, you can kind of take whatever the fuck, or early Ascensions, you can kind of take whatever the fuck you want, and that's fine. But in this game, on Ascension 20, the harder it gets, the more you want to take, like, dummy attack cards um, early, just so you can get through those fights, and then brute force your way through a couple of elites in order to, like, try to scale through the act. So a lot of times you want to find a, a path that has three good hallway fights, so, like, boom, 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 into a campfire, and then into an elite. That's like the basic, it's like as basic as it can get, right? There are other times when like, I'm considering this path right here because you go this way and usually on act one, uh, a deck that's gonna perform well is gonna take two elites, um, usually. But this way seems a little bit more difficult because there's only one campfire and then you're just fucked. This way has three campfires and then you still only get one elite. Um, I could go this way to be honest. This actually might be a better route is going one one fight, two fight, three fight, fucking limp away from this elite, limp away from this fight, rest, upgrade, fight another elite. Or you can look over here, three fights into a shop so you can guarantee something decent, into a fight, into a campfire, and then you could take uh, a second campfire or another fight. I think this left path is honestly better because you need to you need to really cherish your campfires. Campfires are like extremely important on every single act. Getting more than just one campfire as you're going up is usually pretty good. Um, yeah. So, I don't really like a lot of these starting rewards. I kind of like, honestly, the, the max max HP, but also we're going to be taking a shot no matter which way we go. So, upgrading a card is more likely best, and that allows us to take this. Because normally, if you go three fights and then a campfire, you're going to be upgrading a card. And that card, most of the time, on Ironclad will be Bash, just because Bash is just a phenomenal early game card. It loses a lot of its value through Act 2, and then Act 3 is not super good, like upgrading Bash. But on Act 1, it's just it's really fucking good. So we're going to do that. We'll take this fight. Or we could take this fight. Now, honestly, if you're a fucking pussy-ass little gamer, you're going to take the short end. But I'm going to start a little bit farther back, take the long end. You're like Tristan. That's the same thing. Chat, shut up. Um, on this fight, you can tell which guy does what. So the guy with yellow, uh, yellow and green... He either attacks you for six, or he debuffs you and weakens your attack for two turns. Um, this guy, the red and yellow ones, they will either attack you for seven or eight, or they will buff up their strength by four. So, yeah, knowing that if it's between those is good. You usually want to focus down the guys who are going to buff up your strength, because defending against these guys usually isn't too big of a hassle. Taking that six damage isn't bad, because you're burning blood, gives you your six damage back. Uh, True Grit here is okay. Burning Pact is pretty shit, and Clasp is god awful. It's either True Grit or Skip. I'm gonna take True Grit. Um, so a lot of times with this part of the fight, what you want to look at is what's coming up in your draw pile. Because again, like I said, taking the six damage isn't that bad. Because the next the next turn, or when you kill him, you're going to regen that 6 HP. So, me doing this, honestly, isn't that bad. I don't see a very, like, I don't see a lot coming up in my next hand. But there's a good chance that I'll either be able to kill him, or I'll be able to full block. Which doesn't really matter which one I do. Um, 
I could have gone for the defense that turn, and then I could be regen more, but it just all depends on what you think might happen in the fight. So, Cleave's good. It's good AoE early. It's a good just basic attack card. Um, I'm taking it in the lieu of either fighting Gremlin Knob. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to what was going on in the screen. Uh, Overexplained. Ooh, good curse. Good thing we have a. I prepared a shop right afterwards. So that we can keenly get ding, ding. away from this Thank curse. Thank you for subscribing. in chat. What a god game. Hello. I'm going to keep the curse and I'm going to buy offering. <laughs> Maybe. Luland. Thank you for the 19 months, man. Much love and many waffles to you, my man. Thank you. I really appreciate that, my dude. Thank you very kindly for that, my man. Thank you so much. Much love to you. Thank you for the 19. Lots of love in the chat. Lots of love in the chat, and I, or else I stop explaining anything. So right here, I'm considering taking an offering. It's a card that will probably scale you pretty fucking hard into the game, but I don't think that it helps us. When you're when you're thinking about taking a card like offering, you're thinking about the value that you can get with it versus the cards that you have, right? So, um, if I take offering right now and I offering, I might get. I, let's say I'm a Grinch Gremlin now. If I take offering and I play offering, I might literally fucking draw three defends and a decay, or just two defends and a decay if it's unupgraded and it draws three cards. Um, which really isn't all that value because drawing things like I, I explain this every single time I try to overly explain things is draws are like equated to, in my opinion, like equal value to that of actually playing the card for its one mana cost, two mana cost or something like the draw is super fucking important. People don't think about that. Ah. Okay. Pro play here. Remove decay. Oh, Buy anger. Yes or no to buy anger is the question. Look up. We're against uh, the guardian. Guardian anger is not super good against because he likes to attack you quite often. So you usually want to play a lot more defensively against him. So adding a bunch of extra attack cards to your deck isn't super good. Anger could be good against Hexaghost, like 100%. If you're against Hexaghost, you're Act 1. Take an anger. Fucking phenomenal. Um, if you're against Slime Boss, it's, if it's either or. Right now, I don't like an anchor. Or do I like an anchor? I don't like an anchor. All right, let's do it. Fate damage is not too bad. So we'll regen most of that. They, 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 king they, they, of PP. Thank you for subscribing. The king of the PP. Hello from Spain. Hey, from America. Check. We all say hi from where we're from. Where we are currently. Sorry, not where you're from where you are currently uh yeah, i think i'm gonna take a bludgeon here um so one thing i like to always meme about in the runs is things called meat sticks and meat sticks are literally just cards that are they cost a little bit to play i very much like that is disgusting i very much like carnage is my favorite meat stick i don't think it's any better than any other meat stick um but it's literally just a card that just deals a lot of damage for some mana and it helps you beat act one elites so i'm gonna take it i'm gonna put it in the deck and now we're gonna destroy try centuries with it Cleave was okay here. Cleave, so, so one mana Cleave dealt uh, a lot, like, you know, X amount of damage, and then I played Bludgeon so that I can guarantee to kill one of the guys. So Cleave that turn dealt, what did it deal? 24 damage that turn, right? Yeah, Cleave dealt 24 damage that turn total, and then we could have full blocked as well. But Bludgeon uh, allows you to kill one of the guys, right? You always want to focus one of the outside sentries because it goes uh, outside attack, inside attack, outside attack, inside. It's pretty obvious. Um, but, uh, focusing down one of the outside ones before they can attack you is, is pretty good. Uh, as well as the amount of, um, days that they put in your deck can just fuck up your draw enough to the point where you take unnecessary damage like that. King of Peep, thank you so much for the seven months, man. What is Chris Pratt's character in Jurassic World? The forming clay is really cool. I think I'm gonna take a seeing red with the uh, bludgeon that I put in the deck. I'm immediately liking that um, for that exact reason right there. If you're wondering why I put that in the deck, that's 
<laughs> literally the reason is because of a turn like that where you draw seeing red and bludgeon in the same turn you don't feel bad about using your mana to play see or to play bludgeon and then not have anything that you can do on act one you're the only one in africa i think there are other people that live in africa pretty sure all right we're going this way because there are a, a lot of cards in the deck that need upgrading not need upgrading but are very like for instance, True Grit is like an okay card, not upgraded, because but the fact that you can't choose what what you uh, the fact that you can't choose what you exhaust is like a super important part about True Grit. So usually you only are gonna be taking a True Grit. Either you have a deck that doesn't mind a lot of exhaust, or you're taking a deck that uh, or you're taking it with the intention of upgrading it, or it's already upgraded. Yeah, I think that was a good, uh, good use of my bludgeon there. I'm going to take a Havoc. I would like to take a Headbutt and a Havoc, actually. Let's take a Headbutt. So we can ma manipulate and then manipulate the bludgeon around. Okay, we're going to lose gold here because I want to take this elite. This should be fine with... Um, should be fine with our bludgeon and our fire potion and our attack potion. We're very aggressive, so I don't see ourselves dying. It's true get OP. <laughs> I would have won that turn if I had played the seeing red because I'm going to use my fire potion probably most likely I would say huh didn't even do the math it's my fault also the reason why I played headbutt cleave there um, so there there was the order in that first turn I played headbutt cleave strike and not cleave strike headbutt or something like that because I didn't want to put a card back on the top of my deck um, because I wanted to have a greater chance of drawing my bludgeon. And if you put a card on top of your deck, you can get so you don't draw it. That makes sense. Take the question mark room, because I would rather uh, upgrade or remove a card rather than not do that. I'm going to upgrade my seeing right here. Uh, when upgrading cards in your deck, <clears throat> a lot of times upgrading cards that exhaust might not be better. They might seem better, right? Like, upgrading Seeing Red seems like a really strong idea a lot of the time, making it cost zero mana. Um, but then you get to play it, and it gives you two mana instead of just giving you one mana um, net value. But playing upgrade or upgrading a card that only gives you one one play each, each uh, fight. Sorry, I'm, like, actually just fucking retarded right now. I wanted to do an over-explain run, and then I just can't speak. Upgrading a card that might only be able to play once in a fight sometimes can have negative effect versus playing upgrading something like a true grit that you might be able to play multiple times. Then you also have to look at the value of the card, right? Like disarm giving giving an enemy uh, giving an enemy minus strength or minus two strength versus minus three strength. That's big. That's a lot. That's a couple. That's like a few. Same thing here. Want to draw my bludgeon this turn? Didn't draw my bludgeon this turn, so we're probably gonna play one of these. Hey, look, it's a meat stick. <laughs> that was an order there. Should have played two strikes first so I can get the most damage on him. My fault. Wasn't thinking. I'm going to get rid of. Bludgeon? Bludgeon? Are we gonna. Now that we have Carnage in the deck. Is it okay to get rid of bludgeon here? No. We're gonna get rid of our defender. Because he has a minus three strength. Don't think we're gonna need to defend as much as we net like needed to earlier, because it's two times four there. It's not super scary. Getting rid of strikes is phenomenal. Strikes just suck dick in this fight. Um so I could use seeing red. And then I could put him into the grave, right? I could I could transform him here because he transforms in seven damage, and this would deal nine damage since he's vulnerable. But I just put a headbutt on top of my deck, so instead of transforming him for nine damage, I'm going to transform him for 63 damage, which I think is arguably better. Uh, we're going to use this because it's blocking, so it goes down to one, and then we see red, and then we hit him for the maximum value. Do, do, do. 
take two damage here. But he's vulnerable, so the attitude there. Also, you get self-forming clay, so you took two damage, right? So with self-forming clay, you take two damage, but then you get three block the next turn. So it's like, in, in a fight where your HP doesn't really matter at the end of the day, you come out on top with it. Take true, true grit back. Blocks us for his entire attack this turn. Or we can just bludgeon him to death. Cool. I'm going to take Exhum literally just for disarm and seeing red. Yes. I think I think if you have an upgraded disarm in your deck, like, okay. This is like, I, I always say these things and then people take them as gospel, right? When I say like something is good, that doesn't mean that every single time that you see it, it's always going to be good. But I think that if your deck is lacking block cards, right? My deck is currently having, has one extra block card and a mitigation card. Taking Exhum so that you can re-give yourself a disarm plus is insane. But we're going to take that. Sneko Eye. I do kind of want to take a Sneko Eye with a bludgeon. Yeah. <laughs> I do kind of think I want to take a Sneko Eye with a bludgeon. No, we only have one meat stick. The Carnage was uh, an attack potion. Yeah, quit that. Why do you call it a meat stick anyway? I don't see how it relates to the damage. Um, I call it a meat stick because uh, it... So, like... Sword Boomerang costs one mana and it deals your strength times three or four depending if it's upgraded So it's not a good it's not like a super high damage card When it's when you don't have any strength, but then when you do have strength, it's better than bludgeon, right? So arguably for the late game purpose of, of the game It's a better card to put in your deck It costs less and it can deal more damage than bludgeon if you have like 20 strength It's going to deal more damage than bludgeon um, Wait, will it? Yes I did the math after the fact. After the fact, I said it out loud, and then I did the math. Um, so bludgeon all of a sudden becomes worse because it's 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 uh, um, it costs too much and it's hard to play and it's clunky and it's just it's not that good of a card uh, in in a lot of situations, right? But I call it a meat stick because it it itself just deals a fuck ton of damage and nothing else. It, all its purposes is just like it is the it is the slay the spire equivalent of the smork emote like it's all just about dealing fuck tons of damage immediately for no reason a reason for sneko being good okay i can try to explain sneko i'm absolutely fucking batshit retarded when it comes to explaining sneko and i never get it across well <sighs> my eyes when i look at sneko is not necessary. It allows you... It, okay, so everyone thinks about how many one-cost cards do I have in my deck? Do I have any zero-cost cards? Oh my hey, god, hey, it hey, makes hey, it hey, bad. Hey, you upgraded you your seeing red to make it cost less mana, but now that doesn't matter with Sneko Eye, right? Like, playing an anger for two mana, you put two angers in the deck, right? That could be bad, sure. But I think what you can look at instead is the value of the card and just the value of the card. And regardless of its mana cost, you can just look straight at the value of the card and say, is that a good value? And if you have enough cards with a lot of good value, then I would consider taking Sneko Eye because drawing your cards more often, since you draw seven cards a turn, drawing your good cards more often just allows you to be able to play them off more often. And yeah, there are some times, right? Like I'm taking Sneko Eye right now because it makes it easier for me to play Bludgeon. The other options were not energy relics. Uh, I know there was Pandora's box and what was it, like internal feather or something. So playing bludgeon was going to be awkward no matter what. I barely scraped through act one with bludgeon because you have a small amount of cards in your deck. So being able, it was lizard tail. So being able to play seeing red and bludgeon, like having, so we have no draw on the deck, right? So the, the likelihood that at, at 17 cards in the deck before we got exhumed of being able to have seeing red and bludgeon in our same hand was pretty hot. It, at, at some point through a fight, we shuffle the deck a couple of times, it might happen. Once a fight, once every other fight, it might happen. We've played it twice. That's good value in my opinion. But as we add more cards to the deck, we get up to 20 cards, 25 cards, 30 cards through Act 3. It's not going to be as likely of a combo without more draw. Um, and so you have to think about that going forward. But this automatically gives us more draw. And if this comes through costing 2 or 1, it's all of a sudden easier to put play. And it's it's... That, that is another portion of the value of Snekoi. I like to think of the draw of Snekoi before the, 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 the cost value shit. Um, like, for instance, against, against, um, 
Against Stabby Buck. Alright? Against Stabby Buck. If my disarm costs two mana, I don't care. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Drawing disarm is more is more valuable than the cost that it will take to play it. Because if if let's say it's the 14th card down in my deck, I draw it in two turns. That's really that's that is an insane value over drawing it in three turns. Because it's just really good. And so the cost all of a sudden doesn't matter, right? And that's how you gotta look at it. Either way. Mr. Oscar, thank you very much for the eleven months. Hope you're enjoying yourself in the prime time. Thank you. Much love many waffles. We're against champ. So seeing seeing an act two, act one, um, usually like I, I usually don't pay attention super hard to who we're fighting uh, as the boss until we start getting like card choices that matter depending, right? Like angers and stuff, whether you're going against Hexagos or not. Once you get card choices, then I usually take a peek. But I think going forward, uh, uh, like going, going forward on act two, you want to know exactly from the start who you're fighting because that could determine uh, a lot, a lot more of whether you, um, like how you want to scale, how you want to fight. Right, so against against Champ, Champ's the easiest one in my opinion. If your deck can do good things against them, if your deck doesn't do one specific thing, it's pretty bad. And that thing is scaling. Um, so right now we don't really do much scaling other than disarming twice. If we disarm twice, that's pretty good. But against the Champ, when he wants to deal 33 times two, if we're vulnerable, it's all of a sudden not quite as good. Um, so we need to either find some way to mitigate that once we get him below half HP or some way to just gain a bunch of strength and fucking brute force through him. Or, you know, bludgeon, grab a paper frog. Yeah, there's plenty of ways to do so. Um, so we're going to look at the act. On act two and act three, we talked about how on act one, the first three fights that you find are those easy fights. That's only two fights on act two and act three. So the first two hallway fights that you have are the easy fights. Then you get into the hard fights and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So I like this. A, a lot of times you'll see streamers. Um, a lot of times you'll see streamers uh, go for, like, the route with a lot of question marks early. And that's literally just because there's so many there's so many fucking hard hallway fights. And we're trying to get to an elite before we're 1 HP so that we can just rest at every other campfire afterwards and hopefully make it through the spire. Um Usually a good route on Act 2 is an act that has a lot of decision-making. So, like, for instance, going this way might be better than going this way. There's more question hey, marks over here. But over here, uh, we go this way, right? We get to this campfire. And if we're healthy enough, we're feeling really fucking hot and they're just ready to fucking jam, we take double the leap. We're not feeling hot and jammy, we take an extra campfire and then take an elite, right? And then we get a pretty easy second act. Over here, you go this way, or you go this way, whatever way you want to go. You get a couple of campfires, you get a shop early, whatever, whatever. Um, you can get to here, and you can decide, oh, campfire, elite, campfire. But then it forces you into another elite, no matter what. And that's not cool, right? Or you take elite, campfire, and then you have no choice of whether or not you're going to get another, against another elite. So going this way, in my opinion, is better. I don't, I'm not a professional. I'm a fucking idiot. That's what I am. So five strikes with Sneko I might be bad when you get them all in your opening hand. I can concur. You are technically a professional. This is your profession. Do not flatter me. <laughs> okay, get seeing right out of the deck so it doesn't cycle back and cost too much at some point. Good fight, my friend. Eric! Thank you so much for the 300 bits. I also, gotta I make food, but you need bits. Bleed, purple 100, bleed, purple 100, bleed, purple 100, 100, bonus Thank you, 30. Thank you. Later, bud. Thank you for the five months. Chad, get the man some love, please. Thank you, thank you. I didn't even think about this. But another reason why Sneko I can be good is if you're going to be getting a lot of upgraded cards. Because obviously cards are easier to play for higher mana when they're upgraded. Day, 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 day. Thank, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for Almost two whole years. 
Almost. If it was two years, you'd be cooler, but it wasn't, so, yeah, whatever. It's fine. I'm questioning taking an Iron Wave here because we're lacking a little bit of, of resistance, but I don't like the... I don't like it enough. Yeah, it seemed kind of nice. Like I said, Bludgeon's gonna brute force us through this early act. Gonna double tap or a carnage. More meat stick, huh? Is the music fucked up? Try refreshing the stream. Thank you for the 23 months, Demon Azura. I really appreciate you, man. Almost two fucking years, man. I love you, my man. Thank you, homie. Um. Let's see here. Give me a month. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay. Are you people about Rampage for scaling? Rampage is good for scaling, but I don't think in a Sineko I die. Preserved insect is cool. Removing a card also seems really cool, though. I think that removing a card is far better. Um, also, we're going to drink our fruit juice just because I want another potion. Bum, 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 bum. Ba ba bum 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 bum. <laughs> Got him, dude. Why does my disarm always cost so fucking much? Good morning, Abbas. How's it going, man? Very cool game. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Alright, we feeling like we can smash two elites in the face? I'm feeling like it. Disarm, turn one. It don't even matter if my exhum still costs a billion. I'm happy. <laughs> it doesn't even matter, because we have self-forming clay too. Performing clay is phenomenal girth in this fight, so. I'm gonna play Seeing Red just to get out of my deck. I'm gonna make a two-year sub badge for Hardy Boy. I'm just gonna make Hardy Boy all of my sub badges. I'm gonna put that back in the deck. If we cycle back to it, it's good. Armaments is really good because if something costs, uh, if something costs a fuck ton, um, if you if you armaments it, if you upgrade it, if it's not upgraded and then you upgrade it, it will uh, reduce the cost to whatever its original cost was. With the Sneko eye. Remove Hardy Boy. I'm gonna Bing search how to remove my subscription. I mean, remove Brody. Oh, that's what you said. <laughs> All right, dyslexia. Can I remove Brody. What's wrong with what's wrong with what's wrong with fucking going with Hardy Boy, dude? The fuck, man. Wait. Oh, because it wasn't upgraded before. Motherfucker. <sighs> okay, having not upgraded, seeing red is bad. Having already upgraded Seeing Red, it turns out it's bad. Okay. 
do 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 do. Take that, idiot. Bum 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 ba ba bum bum. This fucking sucks. Give me a drop potion. Second wind's not awful with Snackalai, but it's not super. Make the sub badges cult faces? It's not a terrible idea. now now this now this I can get behind as some terrible fucking shit yes I'm gonna disarm that guy hey what's up Nautilus how's it going bud true Very cool, man. Did I have a zero cost attack in my hand? I may have. I don't want to talk about it. Order. Shit. My camera just dropped some frames. Oh, it's. Oh, my camera's doing work right now, man. Don't worry. My camera is fucking awesome all the time. Shrug's not terrible. Right now we're really just looking for corruption. Uh, getting jaxed is cool-ish. Transforming two cards is also cool, I think. Hey, remember that Rampage and Iron Wave that we said wasn't a good card and we probably didn't want to take it? Yeah, we have both of those in our deck now. <laughs> That's cool. That's fine. Oh, this is sick, dude. All right, we want to let Carnage go. Hey, my camera's... Oh, look at that. Oh, look at my camera, dude. Look at me go. Look at me fucking owning, dude. I am fucking owning, chap. Let me go, man. <laughs> One of those two FPS <laughs> animated surf you'd stop motion. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. Yeah, apparently we're playing an only rampage fight, I wasn't aware. The only card in my deck that matters, I think.
Okay, Rampage is dealing some decent damage right now, chat. Not gonna lie. Legend. This splits him. I don't think I want to split him right now, do I? I don't think I want to split him. Far better. This is a good turn. This is a pretty good turn. I don't want to say that I needed a rampage in that deck, but apparently I needed a fucking rampage in that deck. I wasn't fucking aware. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. Overexplained run. You give me an overexplained. Chat says, hey. I would very much like it if you would overly explain everything that is going on in your run at this time. And I said, would you like me to take some fucking smork card, meat stick, double bludgeon, sneko eye deck? Because if that's what you wanted, then yeah. Hey chat, how do I play this deck, by the way? Uh, you fucking just, uh, <laughs> you just, uh, All right, Ori can give us, Ori can get, so what we're looking right now for is dual wield. We want dual wield and demon forms and dumb shit. So we could either Ori and look for dual wields, or we can astrolabe our strikes and look for dual wields. We would astrolabe strike, strike, iron wave maybe? Strike, strike, defend probably. Not opposed to those cards, to be honest. Chat, find me a demon form. Where lieth the demon formeth? Mm -mm -mm. Going this way. I'm taking triple elite. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Triple elite? I don't give a fuck, chat. Ask me right now, Tristan, do you give a fuck? Do, uh, do I get- no, I don't. with that bludgeon there.
All right, so I don't know how we defend things. What is the boss of this act? It is uh, Awakened One. Awakened Guy. This is a pretty hard turn here. It's like you have to do that, and then you have to do that, and then you have to do uh, this, and then you go like this, and you go like this, you go like this, you go like that, you go like that. Okay, that was a pretty hard turn there. Also a very hard turn there, to be honest. Battle Trance seems good. Even even if it can cost more, I think it's pretty good. Do I value getting a shop early or late? Late. I like how there's just the punch option. Just like... Punch! Punch! I want to punch! Uh, could have transform evolve and carnage, probably. Seeing red, to be honest. Cleave, probably cleave. Maybe cleave. What is Carnage's beta art? Let me just... Wait, no, no, don't click on it, you fuck. It is... Just... A different... A different... <laughs> it's just worse. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna do... Rampage, you served your purpose. Oh, one of those is really good. One of those is quite good. Quite. I almost want to use this just for the draw. This turn sucks dick. Um... Chat by Frost. Hey, Jack. Yeah. Yeah, bud. Right. See you, dude. Do you know uh, how that works? I'm they, 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 they. Thank you for you to science the run at the event and choose another car to transform. Sweet dreams are made of this. Who am I to disagree? I, I travel Idiot. the world in the seven seas. Uh -huh. Everybody's looking for something. Yeah. No, Happy no, no, no. one year anniversary. Chat, give us a top to bottom. Yeah. Top to him and then bottom to him, dude. Put, put your bottom on him. You know what I'm saying, dude? Thank you, man. I really do appreciate it, bro. Thank you so much, homie. Hope you they, 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 Thank you for subscribing. Hey, Tro Johnny. Thanks for that sub, man. 
Thank you very much, Tro Johnny, for the brand new prime time. Thank you. Giovanni, thank you for the following. I could kill you. That means I take more damage than if I didn't kill you. Hmm. I can hit something once. Huzzah! I is drunk. I have money. I like Frost Frost has money. Agreed. Yep. I agree. I... I... Yep. Story checks out. Yep. Story seems good. Good story there, friendo. Way to story. Good job. Good way to fam slam. Jam! You know? This is going to be a hard fucking run or a hard fight because we have to wait until we're at 19 fucking block to be able to hurt him and then also block for more than six every turn. Cox Trio, you're a cutie. Chat thinks you're a cutie. I think you're a cutie. Fuck you. Hey, I hope your whole family has a nice Christmas. Yes. Tee hi. I'm a donation ghost. Here is a message from a sub called Danky. It reads, mm -hmm. hey dummy, how about mm -hmm. you get good and play a real game? Like honey pop or a shower with your dad's simulator. Mm -hmm. Love, Danky. Would you like to pay for this message? <laughs> Would you like to pay for this <laughs> Did you just offer? <coughs> Did you just offer? <laughs> you just offer to have me pay for your donation? Thanks, fam. That means a lot. It means a lot that you even consider me for to pay for your donation, bud. There we go. We win. Well, right before we started taking 18 elite fights, that's pretty good to draw corruption there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Robo bitch. What it do? Very serious right now, gamers. I'm very serious right now. <laughs> Anyone need this uh, overly explained? Anyone need my plays right now overly explained? 
We are currently in the midst of an over-explained run. I just want to make sure if anyone really needs this shit super duper explained right now. Yeah, you do. Uh, all right. I got the big fucking slap. I slap him really fucking hard. Screw the bounty. You're a bronze man. You mean screw the bounty? What do you mean screw the bounty? Take a shot, wait. Fuck do you mean screw the bounty? We're gonna recall here just in case we die. Just in case we take a lot of damage, because we're about to take two more loots. This ain't it. I give it the three dollars. Screw your bounty. Did I lose rampage? Yeah, I lost rampage on purpose. Good turn one. You a bitch? Thanks, actually. It was good to see you, my man. Fuck you! I hope your whole family has a nice Christmas! That feeling when Frost doesn't get paper towel jokes. Can you fault me for not getting a joke about a paper towel? Wait, am I? <laughs> Wait a minute. Why am I? Why am I still getting hate? They, 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 Excuse me. Thank you for subscribing. Yo, Pink Cloud, thanks for the year, man. Like super order. I'm not really paying attention to the order that I'm playing these cards. Hi, welcome to the YouTube video. That's the intro clip. <laughs> Feel no pain is good here. I'm glad I don't have to take a shovel. King Cloud, thank you very much for the year, my man. Listen. Bleed purple 100 bonus 10. Hi, YouTube. How's it going? Hey! Shut up! I only get to talk to YouTube. YouTube, don't listen to that man. You come over to the stream right now. You say, that's my dog. I was, normally this camera's facing me, but it's facing my dog today. Come over to the stream right now at the Clay Knight in the chat. If I'm playing Slay the Spire, he's probably here and tell him, hey, man. Fuck you. And then leave. You don't have to be here. You can go back to watching the YouTube video. That's perfectly fine. Or you could sub to the stream. It's like whatever you really want, man. What do Fuck you, you want? I right? hope your whole family has a nice Christmas. What do you want in life? No you me? That was the weakest re I've ever heard in my entire life. I'm taking one damage of this turn. Wait, how are people on YouTube already? <laughs> how are people here from the YouTube video already? I was not expecting this. I'm very sorry. <laughs> -E 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 -E. I'm sorry that this is happening to you, Clay. Wayfinder, thank you for the 100 bits. Video game splatter, thank you for the file. Hey, what if I don't take all this damage, though? That'd be cool, right? Yeah, carnage. Drink your juice. I ain't drinking fucking shit. I don't need to drink the juice. Why the fuck would I drink the juice? Fuck you. I hope your whole family has a nice Christmas. Yeah. What's the difference between the piano and the tuna? You can tune a piano, but you can piano a tuna. 
Paper towels, I get it. Yep. Chad, do you like that paper towel joke? I fucking love that one. That one was really clever. Instead of taking 20-something damage, we took zero damage. Suck my dick, transient. I almost want that second shockwave, but I don't think it's super good. Robo, bitch! Again? Again? We're just trying to get to corruption. <clears throat> Alright, we've reached corruption. We dash nice. Fuck you! I hope your whole family has a nice what question! Want? What the fuck do you want? Why does a chicken coop have two doors? If it had four, it'd be a chicken sedan. Feel good about yourself? You feel really good about yourself, man? You, you, you feel. It's now four dollars to tell a joke. <laughs> They're cute! Come on! I'm just joking, man. I'm just joshing you, chat. I'm pulling, I'm yanking your chain. That's what they call it, right? Yeah, that was pretty cool. Bottled flame. What would I like to put in my opening hand? Um, so a lot of times, okay, I'm actually gonna go back just Pull it back in, Chad. Reel yourself back in for like five seconds, okay? We started off this run with an over-explained run. We're gonna just gonna like go into like the nitty-gritty of why I'm doing what I do. A lot of times bottle flame is bad. Let me let me let me let me explain why it can be bad or it can be good. Um, a lot of things in this game, when people say they can be bad, a lot of people write them off as that's bad. For instance, a card like uh, like perfected strike. That's a bad card, or, or uh, bludgeon. That's a bad card. There are some bad cards in the game. For instance, fire breathing. Name another card that's just bad. There's really, like, there's not many cards in Slay the Spire that are just terrible. Um, like a lot of like the discard cards for silent, people tend to just call bad and just don't put them in your deck. But there are places where you can very easily put them into your deck. Um, and, but putting something into your starting hand. Uh, with, with Bottled Flame, putting an attack in your starting hand usually isn't exactly what you want to do um, because to, to start off each fight, you usually want to start off by either killing them up front, so maybe Bottle Flaming a Bludgeon when I'm on Act 1 probably be pretty good, just get some really big damage out. Um, but putting an attack in your hand allows you to not draw the things that allow you to scale into being what your deck has like essentially born to be. And our deck right now is doing corruption, feel no pain. We get corruption with Sneko Eye, it makes all our shit cost zero, feel no pain, everything creates block. Fan fucking pass, right? Congratulations. We've won. Um so putting an attack in our hand limits the ability, instead of drawing seven cards to try to get feel no pain corruption in our starting hand, we then only get six cards. But we're going one, we have gambling chip, so if it's a bad fight, right, we could we can just say, nah 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 nah, get give me something different. Also, we're up against Awakened One. And Awakened One has, of course, those two little goons next to him that are prime fucking territory for Gremlin Horn and things that you want to kill early. Therefore, I'm a gamer. So that's the logic behind why I'm gonna put a bludgeon in my opening hand. So I hope that that makes a little I'm gonna take an ice cream yep yep we're gonna put it we're gonna yeah we're just gonna 
Floor 49, 48, excuse me. Floor 48. The floor before the final boss. The last physical chance for this deck to find a dead branch. Let us begin. Okay, good fight. Did we get the dead branch? Nope. Okay. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. <laughs> good fight. So, okay, metallicize in this deck is awkward. Um, so, playing um, <clears throat> playing against the Awakened One, every single time you play a power, he gains two strength. When he does his blank times four turn before he becomes Awakened, he uh, technically playing each power scales him times uh, eight instead of scaling him times four, or instead of times two. So, that means that we're giving ourselves four block at the end of every turn, but uh, he's going to scale by eight damage, so he's going to be technically dealing four more damage than we're going to be giving ourselves block for. But, um, but uh, when he's not, when he's doing these singular attacks, I'm going to be blocking for two more than what he originally was going to be doing. So whether that's good enough to deal with or not, I'm actually not entirely sure. Because I feel like that's all based on RNG of whether I roll a bunch of times that he gives me good attacks or a bunch of times that he gives me bad attacks. I don't know. We're going to get rid of Intimidate. Uh, we're going to get rid of Armaments. Most of the cards in our hand right now are upgraded. Get rid of our Curse. These two cards kill one of these guys, and we get another draw. So that's pretty good. Let's do it. Thank you for subscribing. Happy two months, Papa Frost. Hey, bud. Happy two months to you, too, my man. I love you. Well, <laughs> we either can play Feel No Pain or Corruption. Not both. Ain't that but a thing. Wait, no, man, we can play them both. We go like this. We go like this. We go like this. Okay, cool. That's very cool. We don't need our AoE anymore. Full blocked. Trying to sleep. Give it two months, man. Also, Apes Family. Um, I'm sorry. My chat told me to do an over-explain run right now. So I uh, saw that you subbed a while ago. And then I, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll thank him for subbing in a little bit. He can wait. I shouldn't have waited. I should have said thank you immediately. I forgot. That is legitimately my fault, and I'm super sorry. Hope you can forgive me, my man. Thank you for subbing. Really do appreciate that a lot. Yeah, fuck that guy. That guy's an idiot. But he has a tiny penis. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I'm liking the over-explain run, except for like the 15 minutes that I wasn't overly explaining things. But sure, yeah. Compliment sandwich.
All right, so here I was going to bludgeon, but what I'm going to do here is this and this. Wait, is it one damage off? Oh, you fucking motherfucker. You fucking motherfucker fucker. Okay. I was going to try to put a bludgeon back on top, but... To block this turn, we're gonna get feel no pain off that. Carnage is gonna get rid of itself. Also, feel no pain block. are wonderful I don't mind having voids because then I just draw things that cost zero thank you Sneko I I appreciate it a lot all right would I rather fight probably time eater looks like a lost run same day, 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 day. thank you for subscribing Anal Vector. Let me say that one more time. <clears throat> Anal Vector. Hardy Boy. Say it. He said it. You just couldn't hear him. There's no microphone on him. Anal Vector. I love the over-explaining, but have to get to work. Have hey. a good stream, bud. Trying to sleep. Thank you for the 300 fucking bits, my man. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Much love, dude. All right. Let us go. God fucking damn it. This shit again? <laughs> this fucking shit again, man? God damn it, dude. Oh, wait. Here's some more. Oh, shit, dude. Oh, wait, here's some uh, more lore. Uh, I will take them all, dude. If you got any more bits left, left over, chat, feel free to just drop them on by. That's fine. More than happy to take them off your hands. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you want, chat. Whatever will make you happy, to be honest. Don't forget to cheer with bleed purple so I get more money. Thanks. Bleed purple 100 bleed purple 100 bleed purple right, yeah. 100 bleed What's purple next? 100 bleed okay. purple 100 What's bonus next? 50 got you. Right. My dude, here are some spare ones. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. For the biddies. I do appreciate that a lot, my man. Thank you for the 500. Bleed Ripple 100 bonus 10 just a couple to feed Hardy. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Bleed Ripple 100 bonus 10 oof, I am so much lighter now. Trusty Fox, why are you giving me money, dude? That's my S, the guy who makes all the green screens, but he's currently out of commission because I can't do green screens, so my life sucks and I want to kill him. Play two cards this turn. I think it's a good turn where he's not attacking for a lot. Just do a blue screen. Thanks, man. All right. Got him under the mark, so he's going to regen this turn unless we can grab the kill by drawing four bludgeons. That's pretty... That's close-ish. What is that? 63, 126. That's close-ish. That's kind of close, right? Holy 
Foolish! Foolish! Okay. I guess I'm a fool. Why not use Reaper there for the heal? Because it gives me feel no pain block. And also it takes up his counter more. Is that perfectly a 63 times two that I left him at so that I could get him a kill with two bludgeons that turn like I had prepared the entire time 2001? That was a year where a lot of things did badly happen. Can we get five gifted up? Don't forget, chat. I'm not, I mean, I said this earlier today. I did say this earlier today. And I'm just like, I'm going to say it one more time. Bleed purple 100 bonus 10 2001. Today, Aspire Odyssey. Today... And tomorrow, we're not going to be losing that many subs. And if we do hit 3k subs, we get Frost P. Uwu. I'm not saying to donate subs. Or to sub if you're not already subbed. It would like a Frost P. Uwu. Huh. But like, you feel me? Seriously, though, I think we need some ways to get some strength. Hey, butter. Bleed purple 1000 bonus Bleed 100. Purple, yep, yep, so yep, what yep. exactly did they say happened to your um, computer motherboard? I, I think that I figured out the issue, and it's not necessarily what they thought it was. They, 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 um, they, 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 thank you for subscribing. They just thought it was a shitty motherboard, and they did what I asked. Bleed purple 100. Bleed purple 100. Bleed purple 100. Sorry if I upset you yesterday, Dad. Thank you for subscribing. Even though STSISNT necessarily my jam, I still love being here. No, 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 Streamer who makes any game fun to watch bleed fucking purple, I guess. Bleed purple 100. Bleed purple 100 bonus 50. Hold on. I'm going to take my headset off so that all I can hear is myself and I can get to things in the order in which I want. Okay. Number one. First is first. Computer. They thought it was just a normal motherboard switch thing happened. Then the motherboard that we put in on, on water, water damage, whatever. What I think it is, is because my, this computer with the new motherboards having the same issue. And so what I think it is, is when I plug, or I know it is, is when I have this, because this is, uh, this camera right here is a DSLR, right? Ah. And then my green screen camera is also a DSLR. When I plug them both in, it causes my entire computer to freeze. And the only thing that can fix it is restarting my computer. And I think that it has something to do with plugging in two of the Elgato cam links, which is uh, essentially the, um, the little device that makes it like a capture card for cameras. And so having multiple of those plugged in is like absolutely destroying my computer for some reason. And I think it might have fried my last motherboard. That's what I think happened. Now, Saren, to, 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 to talk about what you just fucking said. Listen, I don't hold grudges. I appreciate the apology. I'm just very honest with how I speak. That's just how I am. You know me. I'm just honest. When things bother me, they bother me. It doesn't mean that I hate you. Also, my hair would like to say hello. Nepo, thank you for the five gifted subs. Can we get a frost pegasm? Please, baby. Thank you. I do appreciate it a lot. You use a powered USB hub? I do have one, but not for cameras, no. I use it for, um, I use it for like uh, my stream deck and like little minor things that, that don't need a lot of power. bit of memory for each is that ram do you think i need 64 gigs of ram or what nepo thank you very much man all right so here i'm considering taking a second uh corruption here to try to get corruption off faster i'm also considering taking a rage 
think rage is good. Chad, can I go PP before we get into this fight? Here, I'll turn on the cool music. I thought this music would change when we got in here. Look at Hardy Boy. I'm going to go pee. I'll be on the headset if you need me. Bleed purple 100 bonus 10, we need you. Thank you for the bits, guys. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for everything. Should be a PP announcement that introduces Hardy Boy. That would require me to use of my green screen camera, but yeah. All right. They are both attacking me this turn. I'm not blocking for anything. Having a bludgeon in my opening hand probably wouldn't be good. Uh, I'm full HP. Having a reaper in my hand probably wouldn't be that good. I don't think that I can... I might be able to burn through his thing. If I draw something like uh, Shockwave or something, might be able to play Disarm. Let's keep Disarm. Low cost defend is good. A Seeing Red we're going to throw out. I'm going to play Corruption, though. That's a good hand. Oh, would you look at that, chat? What do we see here? A good hand. Yeah. I should have played Feel No Pain first. Yeah, yeah. Like you very much, Mr. Spire Spear, bitch. Got him. Chat, call him a bitch, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Doing that literally just for the block. Loser. Got him. I'm hitting him hard, Cap. Eyes up. Stay sharp. It doesn't matter. Someone said we needed strength. Doesn't matter what. Oh. We don't need strength. I'm like 89% out of 100%. Sure that we don't need strength. I don't think we need strength.
All right. We got 15 black coming up next turn. If he's doing the multi-attack, we're in good shape. If he's doing the big attack, we prepared. All right. Good shit, good shit, good shit. We don't want to use too much of our shit right now. Um, we're going to weaken him here because this will give us weakening for next turn. We don't want to use too much of our sh of our spells right now, though, because this is like the one time throughout the game that he weakens you. Or throughout this fight that he weakens you. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay. So, uh, after this turn, the reason why I... Right now, I could exhume and use my disarm. And I do want to do that at some point. Um, but the reason why it's not super good to do so right now is because after this turn, he has a turn, this third turn, fourth turn, it's his fourth turn technically, where he buffs. And what he does is he doesn't get rid of like things like shockwave, like like uh, vulnerable and, and weakening. He gets rid of things like... Uh, um, of negative strength so what you want to do is you want to save some sort of negative strength value if you can until after he's done so if there's some sort of a way that i could get that back my my thing back next turn my fucking hmm, my exhume back next turn we can use our weak potions to proc the artifact that he gives himself and then be able to own him right now i'm gonna save all my energy with ice cream i think i don't really care about carnage that much What is a Twitch bounty? I'll explain after this. Give me a second. <laughs> My armament is still alive. And we have uh, 15 block for this big attack here, which is good. All right, this is a really good turn because you can use uppercut to get rid of both of his artifacts. Then we do what we talked about earlier, where we zoom disarm, because this will be permanent. He never does the, the the negative strength getting rid of thing again. So bring back that. Cool. I think this is a pretty easy fucking W right here, chat. Not gonna lie, man. Once I start taking things a little bit slowly, I stop sucking ass. What are your thoughts? Jesus, dude. Just stop sucking dick, Jeff. Quick! Throw more weakenings at him! Ah, oh, fucking Christ. Son of a bitch! Hit him with everything you got! Yep. <laughs> ah, and that's the real gamer right there ending the hp at 69 on purpose you're welcome chat and they said bludgeon was a bad guy Bryce, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the five gifted subs, my man. Victory! Thank you for subscribing. Vict Victory Royale. Fortnite. Thank you for subscribing. Fortnite. Fortnite! Thank you for subscribing. Thank you, Bryce. Thank you for subscribing. Appreciate it a lot, man.
Oh, hi, YouTube. Hey. Yeah, I'm going to message Andrew right now. I'm going to say, I know it's late. If it's too late, that's fine. But I just had a really good ironclad run. If you want to upload that as a full gameplay, just cut out bathroom breaks and shit. Thanks, babe. I love you. Okay. Lead purple 100 bonus 10. Someone should yeah, yeah. make a model where you get cards mm. called cheeseburger in cigarettes and they are super good against the heart. Mm -hmm. Giving it special debuffs like high cholesterol, yep. cancer, and heart attacks. I understand, yeah. That's <laughs> Epic gamer meme.